Hello Freeway, one mile. Hello Freeway, one half mile. Hello Freeway, one quarter mile. Hello Freeway, one eighth mile. Hello Freeway, one sixteenth mile. Hello Freeway, one thirty second mile. Hello Freeway, one sixty fourth mile. Hello Freeway, one one hundred twenty eighth mile. Hello Freeway, one two hundred fifty six mile. Hello Freeway, one five hundred twelve mile. We've just passed Antelope Freeway. This is Dale Matthews. For BadCounty.com, I recently spent time in a park talking about the failed law enforcement levy and the county's internal services fund. Let's make the best case that we can for the people who are proposing this because I think that they do have some points. They're saying, look, we need to be able to have sustainable budgeting for a jail because it does no good to pick up somebody if you have nowhere to put them. We do need to have some kind of juvenile services, juvenile justice. It's unfair what happens to these children, etc. We need sustainable. We need to know what's going to happen. We need to be able to extend it into the future. Those are laudable goals. So What's our problem with this? Don't we want sustainable funding for reasonable goal? What I really object to is people like Mark Gatlin, naming names, and Sherry Adkins, who we've heard them tell people when they were signing the petition that 100% of this money is going to go to these law enforcement levies, the ones in the past, the current ones. It's not true. It sounds really good. Oh, it's a hundred, all of the money, well, well, we'll guarantee you all the, yeah, but it's not true. And so when it's not true, right away I'm thinking, now wait a minute, I, I don't want to vote for somebody, something where someone's telling me something that's not true. It's a lie. It's just not, now, if they were to say, well, we'll guarantee that 90% of this, which that's the truth, will go toward, uh, will probably go, will almost certainly go in the right direction, I might be able to live with it, but don't tell me something that's not true and then expect me to vote for it. All right, the, the ISF. So there are departments within the county that that don't bring in any money, like the um, IT department, the uh, computer guys. They don't bring in any money, and so they say, well, where's our money going to come from? So here's the solution. The solution is if you want to make absolutely sure that we're satisfied that the money's going to go to the proper, they'll never do this, but the money's going to go to the proper place. The way to do it is to say, all right, we're going to make an exception. Can You see, you can see already they're not going to do this. We're going to make an exception for law enforcement, for county patrols, because this this um, levy, for example, goes down in flames, okay? And then the next day, well, so you want county patrols after all, huh? Like we haven't said this before. And so we're going to have one just for county patrols and why every dollar, no, don't lie to us, okay, 90%, every dollar is going to go to county patrols. Here's the way to solve the problem, I think. They say, for this one thing, there's not going to be any ISF funds. We're not going to share 10% with the chief financial officer and with her staff and legal counsel. We're not going to share 10% with the commissioner's salaries, please. We're not going to do travel from this. We're just going to make sure 100% of that money goes to nothing but those patrols. And and the the way to do that, but, but what happens if they need uh, computer services? Then they pay for them. Instead of pulling the money out of the things we want to put our money into and then putting it into a place where we would prefer our money not go, like travel, if the people in law enforcement need IT services or they desperately need a commissioner to go to Washington, D.C. and do whatever, just a slight digression. I'm looking at a picture on the website from NACO. It's the National Association of Counties. And it's a picture they put up on their website. They were happy with it. They were, oh, look at the wonderful time we're having. And it's a half-naked girl. I'm not making this up. And she's all dressed in spanglies or something. And you see a lot of her. And she's on a table and she's dancing. And everyone's like, whoa, that looks great. And they're all drinking. Hey, wait a minute. Don't spend my money that could have gone to law enforcement on this. 
No more naked girls on tabletops. Okay, all right, all right, I just had to say that. If they then say, well, we're not going to make an exception because we're in such desperate problems with law enforcement, then on this one exception, then every time you need a service, you'll pay for it. And But you only get what you need. And that way, you well, they've said in the past, well, now, wait a minute. Uh, what if those uh, law enforcement guys, they need photocopies? Why, they've got to pay? Yeah, well, if it's all going to turn right around and go back to law enforcement, why would you take it out in the first place? They take out 10%, and then they put it into these, well, wait a minute. If we don't drive up to Salem or fly up to Washington, D.C., why, there won't be any law enforcement. Uh, that's a big lie. Here's my problem with this. When you've got people that are out getting petitions signed, it's against the law to tell them things that are not on the petition, especially to add in a bunch of new stuff. Oh, by the way, you know, it's not written on the petition, but really, the 100%, hey, hey, hey don't say that. One, it's against the law. Two, it's, it's dishonest. And three, it's fattening. It's not right to do that. Look, here's $100,000. Hey, thanks. Oh, give me back 10 of that. No, wait a minute. The solution, I think, again, is if you really don't say, remember the May levy, last May, the May, oh, the money may go here. That's what it really was. That was the May part of the May levy. The money may go to this and it may be not. And we caught him on tape saying, uh, well, let's really just not be so clear. You know, oh, well, that's just a little, we need a little, I'm not making this up. Oh, we need to be a little bit more vague about that because if we promise that it will, then we're going to have to do that. That's what they said. And so we'll say, well, we may do this. It may go to this, and it may go to that. And the sheriff has recently said, oh, well, you know, this new one, all the money could, it could be used for this. Now, hold on a second. It may, it could. The only way to make absolutely sure that you know where the money is going, I think the first thing is to get rid of these commissioners. But beyond that is to say, all right, because you don't trust us anymore, which I don't. I'm at all these meetings. I hear what they say about these things. Let's be purposely vague. Hey! So the way to do that is to say, all right, we're not going to do business as usual because this is so important. These are children. These are animals' lives. These are patrols, if we'd ever get around to that. We're going to make sure that there's no 10% siphoned off for our salaries and that we're going to not charge an ISF rate. They're never going to do that. That would be less money for them to spend. Say, hey, you know, I'll vote for that next time as long as you don't insist on taking 10% of every dollar. They're never going to do that. As Simon Hare said to me once, he said, you're continually putting in these documents trying to find out how we're spending money. You know it's going to cost you a lot of money to find out how we're doing this. I understand when they say, well, when people say we can just save our way into into paying for these things, that's not possible. And they're probably right that that it's not going to be possible by like cutting a little here and a little there. Well, let's not put cream in our coffee. You know, doing these kinds of things that we're going to end up with a juvenile shelter. Okay, gotcha. But I'm not giving you any money at all for anything if you lie to me, one. Just don't do that. Please, stop it. And the other one is, if if your plans don't make any sense, or if you're being purposely vague, and you even say in a public meeting that you're being purposely vague, I'm not going to give you any money. And if and if your solutions involve saying, well, what those dogs are not going to live if I don't fly off to Washington D.C., I don't believe you when you tell me that. So I'm not being reactive and saying all government is rotten. Well, I know some people believe that. I'm not one of those people. But I know there's some rotten parts to ours, and until there's people I can trust, I don't want to give them any money. I don't want to give them 10%. I don't want to give them $10, because they're just going to throw it away on frivolous things. I want these services. I want the little animals to live and all that. Of course I do. I don't like being forced into doing it, and much like the library. I understand the library folks. Well, look, we have a heart of the community, and we... Hey, but all it takes is 51% or 50% plus one person to force me to pay for that. Well, if you put the money into this, then that'll free up money for something else. Well, let's try that. In fact, we won't even be specific, purposely vague. 
well, let's suppose there's project A, B, and C, and you put money into them, well, that frees up money within that project. So what that means is, if you put your money into this, why, don't think about that now, because that money is going to go over here, and it'll be spent on something you really want. Now what, you're telling me that you're not putting into this new levy anything about rural patrols, but if you want rural patrols, or if you want more chlorine in your pool water, why, my gosh, you're going to get that by voting for this. Wait a minute. Now, wouldn't that apply to everything? That means, you know what? If you want more rural patrols, why don't you support animals? What? Yeah, because you want to support animals. Yeah. And if you support animals, then that may free up money. Yeah. That could be spent on this other thing that you really need. No, wait a minute. If we really need it, why don't we have voting on that? Proof that this is a bit of a shell game, just a bit, the proof of this is, okay, you put your money into this thing, and it's really going to help you on this other thing that you really want or you really need. No, we didn't put up anything about that because we put this one up. I would rather that you put up something about this. Well, that'll come later, but this wouldn't help for that. No, no. So I'm sitting there listening um, the last levy while the commissioners are on a live uh, teleconference, which is a lot better than, than travel to me. And uh, they got a huge screen and they hardly ever use it. Uh, that's for another um, story. So they're on this thing and, and they're being given the latest information from Salem about how to pass levies. Whoa, they're really paying attention. And they say, by the way, have you considered the idea of throwing in something on the last levy where it's going to help children at schools? Because they're explaining to them, they say, what you need to do, I mean, they were very clear. You need to find something that people, it's a hot button with people, like children. Let's protect the children in schools. Can't have those children bursting into flames. Okay, we need to have the money for this. So if you tell people that the money may go for that, but you don't commit for it, why, they're going to vote for it. It didn't work. Would you swear on the Bible? Well, I was raised, don't, you don't swear on the Bible, but would you swear on the Bible that this, oh yes, yes, Cheryl Walker says yes, Keith Heck says yes, the sheriff is nodding his head, Mark Gatlin, he's fine with that. Wait a minute. You know, someone took a flash picture and I thought, oh, you know, here's the end. It's a lightning bolt. It wasn't true. They had just said earlier that same day that that wasn't true. There's a reason I don't trust these guys. It's not because I think there's anything inherently wrong with government. There isn't. We're a government, right? Well, maybe not in Josephine County. I don't trust them. Now, challenge. So I go to SOS meetings, as many as I can go to, and as securing our safety, and they're behind this. Well, there's an awful lot of county employees and, and county government people and city government people, and they're all really the wheels behind this. Oh, and, and SEIU, one of the unions, is providing them the phones. Oh, but there's no there's no government involvement. Yeah, right. And uh, what else? Uh, oh, and you can take your petitions down to the courthouse and drop them off at the assessor's office. Hey, wait a minute. I thought you said there was no involvement by the county. Okay, it's purely citizen-driven. There's no government. Yeah, it's just not true. But, okay, so here's the challenge they gave me at SOS. I said to them, I said, look, um, do you realize that you have people and I'm thinking directly of, I'm mentioning him by name, Mark Gatlin and Sherry Adkins, who's his campaign manager, so Mark can run for county commissioner. Do you realize that they have been caught telling people that 100% of the money is going to, and we know this is true because Mark Gatlin said it on tape also. Well, oh, 100% of the money and they're the ones that are going to enforce it. Yeah, right. I said to them, do you realize that you have people here representing SOS? They're getting people to sign something fraudulently. I'm using the right word here because they're telling them 100% of this money is going to go to this and it's not possible, not in our system. I think we could change the system, but we're not going to do that. The commissioners are. So I said, how does that make you feel to be part of a group where there are people who are lying to the public to get them to sign something? It was kind of a gutsy thing to say to a group of people that are all in favor of this. And they were, and some of them were, that guy should never get a chance to speak. And others were, oh. one guy got up and left the room. He was so angry that I even brought up a question. And Archie Lighty, I like Archie Lighty. He's a good guy. And he's in charge of the group. And he said, no, wait, wait, wait. He says, when people ask questions like these, and Dale talked to me ahead of time, 
I said, yeah, please do come because we should be able to pass the acid test. We should be able to answer these questions. When such things happen, we should have answers ready. And so he's asking a question which is a legitimate one. And so I said to them, how do you feel about that? Well, we've got to do something about that. Some of the people, oh, well, we shouldn't be telling people that. And I said, right, right, that's all. But Archie gave me a challenge at the end. He said, I challenge you, Dale Matthews, to come up with a plan of what are the good things that we can do with this levy, or how do we solve these problems instead of only complaining about them, Mr. Complaining, me, uh, why don't you come up with some ideas of the ways that we can solve these problems, because they are real problems. It's not like they're not real. They're real. And so if it's necessary to do this without the commissioners or without this or without lying or with a, a great start, how could we solve this? But I came up with one. And one of them is, if we're going to spend the money, we can be sure that it's going to the right place if we stop siphoning off 10% right off the top. We've just passed Antelope Freeway.